الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله ملاكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد مع النجود والكرم وآله وصحبه وبارك وسلم صلاة وسلاما عليك يا رسول الله It's continuing from where we left last week where we spoke about the virtues and excellence of lending people money especially those who are in need a similar related topic inshallah where when you give or when you lend someone money that you grant respite you grant the person in debt a bit of time that he can repay the money and this is from the great etiquettes of Islam of being a Muslim that you show mercy upon the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the foundation of Islam is based on mercy and love and this is why there is a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam irhamu man fil ard yarhamukum man fil sama zameen walon par raham karo Allah ta'ala جو آسمانوں کا خالق و مالک ہے وہ تم پر مہربان رحم والا ہوگا شو مرسی اپن پیپل ہوا آن دس ورلڈ اللہ ویل شاو مرسی اپن فرام دا ہیونس ٹو دی ایکسٹینڈ دیٹ اس من اسٹیٹ ون حدیث دا پبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم دیٹ اف یو گیو واٹ ٹو اسٹی ڈاگ ٹو اے کیٹ اف یو ایکسٹینڈ دا مرسی دیٹ اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی ہیز پٹ ان ٹو یو ٹو انیملز then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also reward you for that. And there is a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke about a man in another narration about a woman who was a very famous narration and then what happens? She feels thirsty. She goes to the well and she draws the water from the well. She satisfies her thirst. She quenches her thirst. And then why she, why she is returning back she sees a thirsty dog whose tongue has come out out of sheer thirst. She feels very sympathetic for that dog. And then she thinks to herself that I being the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being a human being, God has given me the ability to draw water from the well. But what has this dog got? How can he draw water from the well to quench its thirst? And so she gets her shoe and she draws water from the well and gives that water to the dog and because of that the Prophet ﷺ said Allah forgave all of her sins and she has been made to enter Jannah because of that one good action the mercy that she showed to that dog SubhanAllah Then what do you think about the mercy that you show to a human being and then what do you think about the reward that Allah Subhanahu will give you when you extend this mercy to your fellow Muslim brother and as we will hear later on So he says Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim أخذ علينا العهد العام رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم إذا كان لنا دين على معسر أن ننظره ونضع عنه امتثال لأمر الشارع صلى الله عليه وسلم وطلبا لمرضاته that if we have given we have lent money to someone especially to someone who is in poverty, in, in, uh, in poverty who is finding difficult situations in terms of his financial, uh, financial um, capacity to repay that debt. So he says, Imam Shani Rahmatullah, that we grant him respite, that he gives him a bit more time, and that we do not pressurize him out of mercy, out of following the Sunnah of the Prophet. So whenever you give dain, you give money to someone to borrow, and even if the appointed term has come, out of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
having that bit of mercy with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, grant him a bit of respite. Grant him a bit of leeway. Don't pressurize him. And on the other hand, for the person who takes money, obviously people should try and avoid borrowing money from people. There's a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam that for, for a shaheed, a martyr, someone that when the first drop of blood falls onto the ground, he sees his abode in Jannah for a shaheed, yukhfaru lahu kullu dham. Every sin of his is forgiven, illa dain, except for debt. In another hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to the news meaning, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said that when a person dies, his ruh is not elevated in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it remains in suspense between the heavens and the earth until the debt that he owed is repaid. So this is a great thing. It is very important that whenever you lend money, you borrow money from someone, you immediately pay them back. But if we are those people who are of a greater status, the, the ones who give, the ones who lend other people money, then give respite to other people. Give them a bit of leeway. Be uh, uh, merciful to them. Don't be harsh. Don't pressurize them. Just because of, out of the pleasure of Allah and His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi because this is what pleases them. Now here Imam Abu Habshani Shani Rahmatullahi says, لَكِنْ بِشَرْطِ الْإِخْلَاسِ لِنَهْيِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ عَنِ الْغِيَاءِ وَالسُّمْعَةِ You do this. You give the other person who has borrowed money from you, you give him respite, you give him a bit more time, out of ikhlas, sincerity. And then he says, فَرُبَّمَا سَامَ أَحَدُنَا الْمُعْسِرَ بِبَعْضِ مَا عَلَيْهِ بِحَضْرَةِ النَّاسِ لِيُفَالِ most often what happens is we grant respite to people, we forgive people who have borrowed money from us in the presence of other people so that they say good words about you. MashaAllah, Bah. It's a very generous man, very kind and generous hearted man. That he forgives people of the day. And then Imam Shah Rahmatullah says, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُ لَمْ يَعْلَمْ بِهِ إِلَّا اللَّهُ سُبْحَانُ وَتَعَالَى لَرُبَّمَا كَانَ يَثْقَلُ عَلَيْهِ وَلَا يَنْشَرِكُ لَهُ صَدْرُهُ It would be that if there was no one except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala watching over him, obviously Allah watches over you anyway, but if there was no one present and you were to forgive that person in debt, it would sometimes feel overburdening upon yourself because you don't, we do not have that ikhlas. If you had ikhlas, then whether you forgave that person in front of people or in isolation, it would be the same. Because you are not doing it for people, you are doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is why he says you should be very careful when you forgive people, when you extend generosity, to, when you extend favors upon, upon them, when you give money to them. Especially people who give money in the presence of people, they should be very careful that there is not even an ayah to avriya in it. Ostentation, to show off. Because a speck of riya in it, it will completely destroy the ibadah. And this is why, as we mentioned before, the best sadaqah, sadaqat al-nafl, is that which is given in isolation, where no one besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. And then he says, if it mentions a few hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَرَوَى مُسْلِمٌ وَالطَّبَرَانِيُّ مَرْفُوعًا مَنْ سَرَّهُ أَنْ يُنَجِي أن ينجيه الله من كرب يوم القيامة فلينفس عن معسر أو يضع عنه Whoever it pleases that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects him from the anxiety of yawm al And I ask you one question Is the anxiety and the terror and the fright and the problems of yawm al greater or the problems of this dunya? Obviously the problems of yawm al Where one day will be Khamsina al fasana like 50,000 years. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying here, whoever it pleases that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes from him, alleviates from him a problem from yawm al qiyam of yawm al qiyamah, fal yunafis an mu'asidin aw yada'a anhu, then let him forgive a person who is indebted, but he is finding it difficult to repay the debt, he is in poverty, let him forgive that debt. Or let him lighten his burden. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will lighten his burden on Yawm al-Qiyamah. And there's another hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
من سره أن ينجيه الله من كرب يوم القيامة وأن يظله تحت ظل عرشه فلينظر معسرا anyone who it pleases that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes from him the calamities of Yawm al-Qiyamah where the earth will be of copper the sun will be at a mile's distance and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you stand up before his august presence and you will be held accountable for every single thing you did if you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take ease on that yawm, uh, in terms of your account on that day and alleviate all your problems and the fright and the terror of Yawm al-Qiyamah then the Prophet Sallallahu says and also if you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shade you under the shade of his throne فَلْيَنْظُرْ مُعْسِرًا then let him forgive the debt of someone who is finding it difficult to repay the debt if you do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu will give you shade under the shade of his throne يَوْمَ لَا ظِلَّ إِلَّا ظِلُّهُ that day where there should be no shade on Yawm Al-Qiyam except the shade of his throne what a great maqam it is for people to grant respite who are merciful to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another narration, narrated by Imam Bukhari Muslim, it has been stated, تَلَقَّتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ رُوحَ رَجُلٍ مِمَّنْ كَانَ قَبْلَكُمْ فَقَالُوا أَعَمِلْتَ مِنَ الْخَيْرِ شَيْئًا The angels, they took the ruh, the spirit, the soul of a person who was from the, maybe from the time of Banu Israel, from the previous communities. فَقَالُوا The angels asked him, أَعَمِلْتَ مِنَ الْخَيْرِ شَيْئًا Did you do any good? What good did you do in this dunya? He said, I have not done anything. They said, remember. Try and, try and remember what you did. He, used to, he said, I used to give, I used to lend money to people. I used to say to my servants who would then ask for the repayment of the debt. I used to ask them, that forgive those people who are finding it difficult, who are in a very uh, difficult financial situation, and from those people who are well off, just take whatever they can pay. Don't be harsh on them. Don't pressurize them. Don't be severe on them. Be merciful to them. This is what that man said. That I used to give money to people. And then I used to say to my servants who would collect the debt from them like a bailiff, don't be harsh on them. If he is poor, if he is a poor man, then forgive the debt from him. And if he is well off, then don't be harsh on him. Whatever he can give, let him give. It doesn't matter if he can't repay the full amount. فَقَالَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى تَجَاوَزُ عَنْهُ سُبْحَانَهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then commands the angels, or angels forgive him because he used to forgive the debt from other people. Subhanallah. This is the... Has the, how mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. You show mercy to His creation, He will show mercy to you in this dunya and the akhirah. Ar Rahimun, Yarhamuhum ar Rahman, Irhamu man fil ard, Yarhamuhum man fil sama, as the hadith has said. Ar Rahimun, Yarhamuhum ar Rahman. Ar Rahman shows mercy to those people who have mercy in their hearts. And there's another hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. مَنْ أَنْظَرَ مُعْسِرًا قَبْلَ أَنْ يَحِلَّ الدَّيْنِ فَلَهُ كُلَّ يَوْمٍ مِثْلُهُ صَدَقَةً Whoever forgives a person from his debt, a person who is finding it difficult to repay, before the actual mi'ad, the appointed term comes. For example, 2013, uh, you've lent money to someone and then you forgive him. Before the actual appointed term in 2013 comes, you forgive him. Then the hadith of the Prophet says, فَلَهُ كُلَّ يَوْمٍ مِثْلُهُ صَدَقَةً You will be given the reward of an equivalent amount that you give in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The equivalent amount that you give as sadaqah, Allah will reward you for that. And here it says, فَإِذَا حَلَّ فَأَنظَرَهُ فَلَهُ كُلَّ يَوْمٍ مِثْلَاهُ صَدَقَةً If the appointed term comes and thereafter you forgive that person, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you double the amount that you forgave from that person. And this is why Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala anhu he mentions Al-Malfu Sharif what his habit used to be. As I told you before many times Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala never used to keep money never used to hoard wealth. Never in his life did he hoard enough wealth that he had to pay zakat on it. He always used to give. So someone asked him this is in part one of Al-Malfu Sharif this has also been translated in English and I advise people who want to know who want to expand their knowledge who want to know an, uh, an array of sciences of knowledge 
that Allah Hazrat possessed. This has been translated in English, uh, Al Malfud al Sharif, uh, that you read through that kitab. Here I have the Urdu version compiled by Zumaf Tayyazim Hindu Radiallahu Ta'ala. I read it in Urdu and then I'll try and translate it. What was the habit of Allah Hazrat when he used to give, when he used to lend money to people? Someone came up to him and asked, Huzur, mere kuch rupee ek shaks par hai, wo nahi dete. Hazrat, someone has borrowed money from me, I've lent it to him, but he's not even repaying it. Now, before you actually read the answer, there is a wazifa that you can read, uh, which was given to me by a great sheikh of this age, a great muhadith, Uzum Muhadith Kabir, our grand sheikh. He said that at the time of sunrise, you should read this dua. I've, I've completely forgotten how many times it is, but for now, you can pray how many times you can. Inshallah, I will try and find out. I've lost a sheet of paper. Um, this is the dua that you can read. This has also been mentioned in Sa'adatul Darain by Imam al Nabhani. If you've lent money to someone and he's not repaying it, then pray this dua at the time of sunrise, when the sun's rising after Fajr. Ya Rahima kulli sarikhin wa makrubin wa ghiyasahu wa mu'adha. Ya Rahima kulli sarikhin wa makrubin. O the most merciful, the one who shows mercy to those who call and cry with their hearts to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa makrubin and those who are inflicted with pain. O the one who shows mercy to them. Wa ghiyasahu wa mu'adha and their helper and their refuge. Ya Rahima kulli sarikhin wa makrubin. وَغِيَاثَهُ وَمُعَاذَهُ You should read this how many times you can at the time of sunrise. Inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put mercy into the heart of the person who is indebted that you have lent money to and inshallah he will repay that money back. Another narration of Imam uh, Imam Al-Hasan radiallahu ta'ala Ibn, Abi, Ibn Ali Ibn Abi Talib karamallahu wa jalkareem that has Ami Mu'adha radiallahu ta'ala anhu may Allah be pleased with all the sahaba um, there was a, a, a kind of agreement between them that Hazrat Ami Mu'adh will pay him a certain amount of dinanir, gold uh, dinars every year. It so happened that one year it got delayed, the appointed term had finished and Imam Al-Hasan had not received the payment. So he was about to write a letter, but he put the pen down. And he said, I would rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then that night he dreamt of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, why are, you, why are you worried my son? Why are you in a very anxious state? Imam al-Hasan ta'ala related to him sallallahu alayhi wa what he related. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, Shall I not teach you a dua? That if you read it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it independent of going to other people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make the person pay the amount owed to you. As Imam al-Hasan said in the dream, Why not ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And the dua was, Allahumma aqdi fi qalbi rija'ak waqta'a rija'i amman siwaat hatta la arjuwa أحدا غيرك اللهم ما ضعف عنه قوتي وقصر عنه أملي ولم تنته إليه رغبتي ولم تبغ ولم تبلغه مسألتي and there's uh, there's a few words at the end this is a dua that you should all read Allah سبحانه وتعالى I have lost hope from all all people except for yourself والله you are the only one that I have put my hope in والله sever all hopes from the creation of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and make me concentrate in your رحمة and then what happened, after a couple of days, the payment came from Hazrat Ibn Mu'adha radiallahu ta'ala, subhanAllah. So these, these are du'as that you can read. But, look at Allah Hazrat Ibn what he used to do. He said, If this day and age, Allah is talking about his era. In this day and age, to lend money to someone and to think that he will repay it back, is a very difficult matter indeed. मेरे पंद्रह सौ रुपये लोगों पर कर्ज हैं। I have fifteen hundred uh, fifteen hundred rupees that people have borrowed from me, but they have not paid back. Fifteen hundred rupees, obviously in this day and age, may be a very a basic amount, but in those days it was a very huge amount. जब कर्ज दिया ये ख्याल कर लिया कि दे दे तो खैर वरना तलब ना करूँगा। Allah says, when I lent money to people, I made the intention. If they gave it back, then fine. If they didn't give it back, then that's fine. جن صاحبوں نے قرض لیا دینے کا نام نہ لیا پھر خود ہی فرمایا جب یوں قرض دیتا ہوں تو ہبا کیوں نہیں کر دیتا 
اس کی وجہ یہ ہے کہ حدیث شریف میں اشاد فرمایا جب کسی کا دوسرے پر دین ہو اس کی میاد گزر جائے تو ہر روز اسی قدر روپے کی خیرات کا ثواب ملتا ہے جتنا دین ہے اس ثواب عظیم کے لیے میں نے قرض دیے ہبا نہ کیے پندرہ سو روپے روز میں کہاں سے خیرات کرنا And someone forgives the person who was indebted, you, you lent money to someone, he borrowed money of you, and you forgave him after the appointed term had finished, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you twice the amount that you forgave from that person. Allah says, says, how would I have had the capacity to give double the amount of 1500 rupees in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And I'm getting this reward for free. Subhanallah. So this is the mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows to people. To show mercy to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa give me an azam tawfiq to act upon whatever has been said. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad ma'ala nujudu wal karami wali wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallim. Allahumma anfa'ana bima allamtana wa allimna ma anfa'una wa zidna min fadlika alma yukaribuna minka min rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin. اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع ومن قلب لا يخشع ومن نفس لا تشبع ومن دعوة لا يستجاب لها اللهم لا تدع لنا في مقامنا هذا ذنب إلا غفرته ولا هم إلا فرجته ولا دين إلا قضيته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا طالبا إلا وفقته ولا عسرا إلا يسرته ولا مشتاق لزيارة حبيبك المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم إلا بلغته ورزقته اللهم ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا وتب علينا وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد مع الجود والكرم وآله وصحبه وذلك وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصف